What I like to do is start just by naming all of the parts. So when I'm throwing those words around, people know what I'm talking about. Um, but it all basically starts with, with this 10 foot length of inch and 3 eighths top rail. So this is from the fencing department at Lowe's or Home Depot. You can get it very, very easily. Um, one thing that we've all noticed is that there are different lots or shipments. So the metal itself can be slightly different and bend differently depending on the batch that you get. So sometimes you'll get, you know, more flexible than others and they don't all quite look, make this nice bent shape depending on the batch you get. So the point being is try to buy it all together in one batch. Um, but this is what we start with to make this side hoop here. So this is the side hoop. And then we have in between, we have that's the peak connector. So that's connecting the two pieces that after they've been bent. At the very top is the ridge pole. This here is a collar tie. And this is essentially connecting all the, the hoops together. It's made of three quarter inch EMT. Yep, and then, yeah, three quarter inch EMT versus um, the inch and three eighths. And then down here we have the base rail and two of those are put together. At this end, we have angle bracing. Obviously, important to have angle bracing to keep this thing from racking. And then at the end wall, we have our end wall ang angle bracing. So this here holds the end wall together. And then these are the scissor doors that I was talking about for the ventilation. So all of this, the idea was originally, Elliot wanted to sort of have no waste in any of the cuts that he made. So that's partially why it came out to be 14 by 16. And, you know, he's trying to use as much of the pieces from the 10 foot length as he can. So, um, and the secret here, do I have any examples of the T-clamps and brace bands? All of this is being held together by these T-clamps down here. Again, these can usually, you can find these at the, in the fencing department or online, but this T-clamp here is holding the side hoop in place. And then we have these brace bands, same thing. This is all holding any other attachment in place. Um, we do tech screw it on typically. Um, and then the, the basic kind of prep work that you need to do in your shop would be to crimp it down, um, dog ear it, and drill a hole through. So all that is pretty straightforward as long as you have some basic shop. Um, you can use a sawzall or um, bandsaw. I mean, whatever you have. I mean, I mean, obviously. Yeah, I mean, my uh, my boyfriend has a really nice bandsaw, and I prefer <laughs> that because it's a lot faster and cleaner. Um, but you can use a sawzall, um, and then you know you with for drilling it just a, a bench. Um, so with, it, with the bench press, drill press, um, you can do that. You could do it by hand if you really wanted to. Um, but again, pretty basic. Even I can do it, right? <laughs> um, and you showed the T-clamp, right, Adam? Yep. And the brace band. Okay, so we've got all our parts named. Any questions at this point? Actually, one thing I forgot is this is the wiggle wire channel on the... Um, end wall area here for putting into the plastic and the wiggle wire. So we're going to show that as well. Oh, oh, I forgot this one, the knee rail. Is this, are you talking about the knee rail? Yeah, so this is the, the knee rail. Yep, so a, a quick clarification, what we're building is a, a standalone single module. So this would just be 14 by 16. If you wanted to expand it into multiple, you would leave out the knee rails in the center sections. So then you would build a center section without the knee rails in between, so you'd have the whole length. So, so you still wouldn't be able to, to wheel in anything or a tractor or anything? Not from either really, end. Unless you move the module out. But because it's movable, you can pick them up and move them anywhere. So, yeah, you, there's no need to actually um, 
have to wheel something in directly. And it's a knee rail because it's not on the ground because first off, it's, it might be going over raised beds, right? But also for a little bit of extra clearance when you're carrying it over the crops that are existing. Okay. Yep. That you could, you could, but it, it doesn't, it's not that necessary really. Okay. Yep, it doesn't flex that much. 